Back in 2010, Russia and Qatar secured the rights to stage the 2018 and 2022 World Cups. The recriminations, accusations, scandal and fallout for FIFA since that day has been relentless. In all, 11 of the men who made those decisions have been fined, banned, suspended or are under investigation in some way for a variety of different reasons. That has led many to question the integrity of the vote for the Qatar and Russia World Cups. Both countries deny any wrongdoing and say they always acted within the rules. But FIFA's troubles were only just getting started. Top news story are those reports that six officials of world football's governing body FIFA, including the vice president, have been arrested at a hotel in Switzerland. In the last hour, news has emerged from Switzerland of police raids on a hotel in Zurich. Last year, US prosecutors launched a series of raids that led to over 40 individuals and entities being charged with corruption and fraud offences. Those arrested included high-ranking FIFA officials, including one of its vice presidents, Jeffrey Webb. The scale and audacity of the alleged fraud is staggering. The 47-count indictment against these individuals includes charges of racketeering, wire fraud and money laundering conspiracies spanning two decades. This really is the World Cup of fraud, and today we are issuing FIFA a red card. Jack Warner, a former vice president, is accused of asking and receiving $10 million in funds from South Africa. They both deny the accusation. But a BBC investigation last year showed how Warner appeared to have distributed the cash around his business empire in return for his support for South Africa's bid to host the 2010 World Cup. The US authorities are continuing their investigations. There are accusations too that $750,000 intended to help survivors of an earthquake in Haiti was siphoned off by officials. And Jeffrey Webb, a former FIFA vice president and a man seen as Sepp Blatter's successor, is alleged to have received a swimming pool for his US mansion as part of one bribe. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says the arrests are far from over. To every culpable individual who remains in the shadows, Hoping to evade this ongoing investigation, you will not wait us out and you will not escape our focus. A Swiss investigation into how the Qatar and Russia World Cups were awarded is also underway. But that inquiry has widened. In September, Swiss officials announced that Sepp Blatter was under criminal investigation over a World Cup contract involving the Caribbean Football Union head Jack Warner. The TV rights to the 2010 and 2014 World Cups were bought for $600,000. Jack Warner's company sold them on for $18 million, a profit of some $17.4 million. Blatter is also under investigation for a payment of £1.3 million to the then head of European football, Michel Platini. Here we go, Money has always been the Achilles heel for FIFA. There have been previous scandals, but the sheer size and scale of football and the TV money it attracts has led many officials to be tempted into wrongdoing. The World Cup is everything to FIFA. It's how it makes most of its cash. It's the most lucrative sporting event in the world, eclipsing even the Olympics. The 2014 qualifying rounds and final tournament brought in 4.8 billion dollars over four years and after costs are taken into account FIFA made a profit of over two and a half billion dollars. That added to FIFA's overall profits has left them with reserves of around 1.5 billion dollars. But that money is starting to dwindle. The US and Swiss investigations are costing them a lot of money and many sponsors such as Sony, Emirates, Castrol and Johnson & Johnson have not renewed their contracts. FIFA gives out cash to countries around the world to help develop the game. There are six global confederations. Each one looks after the football associations in its continent. In total, there are 209 across the world. During the four-year period of the last World Cup, each confederation received $17.5 million and each national association received $2 million. And it doesn't matter what size the national association is. For example, Germany, who've won the World Cup four times and have a population of over 80 million, receive the same amount as tiny Liechtenstein, who've never even made it to the World Cup and whose population is a mere 37,000. 
For now, FIFA is at a crossroads. There's a new president to elect and he'll have to deal with the threat of further investigation and arrests. There's two controversial World Cups to organise and there's a reform agenda to pass as it seeks to change how it does business. The story and FIFA's troubles are far from over.